The shape of our public spaces, the infrastructure of our cities, from the lifts in our building to the way that light pours through a window, the puddles we jump through, the traffic that we weave through every single day, this influences our sense of movement far more than any individual show I could make as a choreographer. And for me personally, this is dance at its most natural. So uh, last year, I coined a new job title and became the world's first architectural choreographer because I wanted to set myself the challenge of finding a way to show that our cities are dancing every single day. And currently, I'm doing that with an emphasis on cranes. Yes, literally cranes. These amazing structures that are squeezed amongst our building and reflected everywhere, that are like these strange beasts towering over our cities and completely capture our imaginations because they are able to lift extraordinary loads in extraordinary spaces without smashing a single pane of glass. And have you ever considered the mechanics behind how these machines work? How these soaring, arcing, towering, lifting machines that have been around for 2,000 years shaping our landscape work? Have you thought about the um, counterweights and the leverage? Or the cogs and the gears? And how beautiful that movement is, and a dance in its own right. And then, there's the men, the drivers, and invariably they are very often men. I know of two female crane drivers. This is uh, Dave Martin. He is 74 years old and he is superhuman because he can command 10 tons of steel, 100 foot high, with the lightest and the deftest touch of his hand. But cranes, of course, are associated with, with money. And this is a still from the Deloitte's crane survey. They do the survey three times a year, and they use the cranes on a city skyline as a modeling tool to assess the health, the development, the economy, of a city. And of course, cranes represent change, and that is something which we invariably are slightly uncomfortable with. Because is change in our city a sign of it being forward thinking and aware and working for us? Or is change in our city a sense of destruction and ego and things being done without our consent? Take this um, panoramic shot. This is from a 20 million pound penthouse on the South Bank. I mean, it's stunning. The views are amazing. It's a beautifully designed building. You're eye to eye <laughs> with the crane operator and the tower crane. But there is a contradiction there between paying that kind of money to purchase a view and the daylight. There's a contradiction going on in New York with developers being able to purchase the air rights of buildings surrounding their developments, so they can build their skyscrapers higher and higher, even if that means that they end up casting permanent shadows over public spaces. And there's a contradiction because our experience of the construction industry is very often hoardings and road closures and noise and disruption, all happening behind hoardings which are far taller than our fair selves. So I started to think about how could you spin that around? How could you put cranes in all their beauty, back in the center of our attention. At last year, I was awarded one of the Wired Magazine inaugural Creative Fellowships. And I used it as an opportunity to grab hold of my city. This is where I live, in Bristol. And I love this area. And I made, uh, last October, I made Bristol Harbour my set. I made uh, three cranes, my dancers, my inspiration. And I made Bristol itself our auditorium. 
and 10,000 people reclaimed their city and sat wherever the hell they wanted to to get the best view of an iconic area which they already had a relationship with. And I wanted to really celebrate this beautiful infrastructure that's already existing, that has this movement capability already in it. I wanted to create a positive event that united our city back together again, rather than being the construction industry over there who are demonized, but as a place where we all live, work, and play. I wanted to show off the skill and craftsmanship of these gentlemen. You know, of David, of Andy there, of Alan, who's just in the third crane you can't quite see. I wanted to place cranes at the center of attention, not just that the loads they lift, which are valuable, but actually that them themselves. And when I first went to talk to these guys, I went, hi, I'd quite like to do a choreographed synchronized dance routine with your cranes. How does that sound? I was expecting an absolute no. What I got was, oh my God, we'd love to. We've always wanted to do something like that. <laughs> I was like, oh, this meeting's way easier than I expected. But that was because we were celebrating them. We were putting them at the center for once. And I wanted to reclaim my skyline. And I did want to pose difficult questions about who owns our cities. Is it us as the citizens? Is it our governance structures that we elect and that we pay taxes for? Is it the landowners that actually own the land even when we feel like we've bought it and actually we've only got freehold? That view that attracted you to a building to purchase it or rent it, do you have the right to see that? What about the space above your heads? Who owns our public spaces? Who are our cities being made for? And because I'm a choreographer, I really, really wanted to do something that was just basically a really good gift to my city. Um, so, this is what happened. Thank you. Um, 10,000 people came to see three cranes do a synchronized dance routine. <laughs> and we reached something absurd like 4 million people online. And that was without any national press coverage or any live streaming. And I, I kind of understand why. Because this is ECC scan footage of somebody's brain whilst they were watching Crane Dance Bristol with that mad company. 
But what I love about this is that it shows what a visceral experience like this is something that has that total level of stimulation does to our brains. When you combine location and sound and sight and movement and narrative and smell and audience and participation together, you create a memory and a half. And I know it is because I get random emails from all over the world of photos of cranes in other cities. <laughs> from people who were there at Crane Dance Bristol. And what so excites me about that is because the memory of them being there and looking up and taking in that skyline, they've taken that with them. And every new city they're going to, they're looking up again. And we kind of accidentally created a memory for the city, far more than I'd anticipated. We ended up being featured at COP21 in Paris, and they're in all the new uh, tourist videos. And there's kind of this sentiment in the city of, oh, where were you when the cranes danced? Um, and, you know, mass crane dances, you know, they're not going to end world poverty. It's nothing to claim like that. But four million people changing their view of six people in the construction industry and of the cranes is change in action. And 10,000 people coming together and reclaiming their city plants a memory, I hope, that our cities are ours to make the future we wish to have in them. So, my final provocation to you is just very simply, which skyline would you like to see dance next? <laughs> Thank you very much.